Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 15th of May, and hopefully everyone's had a great week so far. As always, this is useful. A like and subscribe is appreciated. I have the chapters below and in the description, so you can jump to any specific update you care about, maybe more than the others. And yes, um, I'm back in the studio. I did complete the Ironman St. George. I did a race report, if you're really, really bored. I do a race report of all my Ironman events. Um, but I did finish. Uh, I did cross the line and it was totally cool. It was a fantastic atmosphere. There's me with my medal outside the big uh, kind of statue for the World Championship. But it was a, a, a great event. It was really tough, um, but I'm super happy. So that was my 20th full Ironman. So it's nice to, to hit that benchmark. Also, another benchmark. We hit 125,000 subscribers, so thank you. For that, I'm gonna do a 125K Ask Me Anything session. So when I got donuts this morning, and there's me holding them. I'm gonna do something a bit different for this one. So there's a LinkedIn thread and a Twitter thread and on the my YouTube page community, there's a thread, type your questions in there. I'll read through them and then I'll answer them and post a video. So then all time zones can participate. New videos. I finished out the three remaining topics for the new additions for the May 2022 update for the AZ900. Um, I did record these the day after I got back from St. George. Um, I am very much worse for wear. Uh, I've got these bags under my eyes the size of baseballs, but whatever, I thought it was important to get the content out. So that completes uh, the AZ900 playlist. It's now nine and a half hours long without the study cram, but it goes through every single topic, including the May 2022 updates. Speaking of which, Microsoft Ping Me, they're offering a hot chocolate bomb um, for anyone in the US to complete a new Azure certification um, between now and the end of June. So for the first 200 people, so you must have a US address, um, but you go and get a new Azure cert and they're gonna send you a hot chocolate bomb. So sweeten the deal. All right, new features. So on the compute side, the VM Insight guest health is being retired. So I can turn on insights for virtual machine. It goes and sends traffic to a log analytics workspace and then gives me information about performance, uh, information about communications. And there was kind of an, an overall health, um, disk space, memory, CPU. That is being retired, just that health part. The recommendation is if I want alerts now where something maybe shifts to unhealthy, is to create a log analytics workspace alert. So this is a, a query based against the workspace. That insights data is still sent there. And the documentation has example queries you could use to get the same result. So it's all built in. Also, there is a price for that. I pay for those queries that run against Log Analytics Workspace based on the interval at which they run. But that's the recommendation because that is going away end of November. Now, the DC SV3 is available in new regions. Remember the DC is part of the confidential compute and that's using the Intel SGX, those secure enclaves that I write my application to utilize that has secure memory, even from other things inside the same OS instance, secure enclave of the processor and that area of memory. So now available in Australia East, Japan East, South Central US and Southeast Asia in preview. The Azure Compute Gallery now supports trusted launch virtual machines. So if this Azure Compute Gallery is confusing, that's just the new name for the shared image gallery. That's where I as an organization can put my own private custom images to be used throughout my organization. So it was rebranded to the Azure Compute Gallery. So what I can now do, remember trusted launch are those Gen 2 virtual machines with the virtual TPM that has things like secure boot. So I get an attested path from the UEFI firmware that's virtualized all the way through to the operating system. Before, I need special things in the image. So I can only use the images provided by the marketplace. Now, I can go and create one of those virtual machines. I can capture it and then store it in my Azure Compute Gallery, formerly known as Shared Image Gallery. So now I have that option for, I want those um, trusted launch virtual machines available elsewhere in my organization using a custom image. 
There's better Azure DevOps static web app support. So this is all about the idea. Remember, a static web app is fantastic for that pre-rendered content. It doesn't require any server-side processing. HTML, JavaScript, CSS, images, fantastic distributed um, availability of that content. And it integrates very tightly with DevOps, for example, GitHub Actions to, hey, I've done a commit, automatically roll that out. So now enhanced support for Azure DevOps, it makes it easier to integrate with the Azure DevOps pipelines. There's now, I can do that from the portal with a single click. And they also added a skip default API build flag. So some enhancements around the Azure DevOps. For my container apps, remember container apps are, hey, it's uh, maybe Kubernetes based, but I don't wanna have to understand AKS, the Azure Kubernetes service. So container apps abstracts away the AKS, makes it very simple to deploy my applications, my modern applications, but it gives me things like Dapper, so very powerful for microservices. It gives me Kada for that event-driven auto scale, um, other Envoy components for the networking, but I just focus on my app and I deploy it, and container apps takes care of all of the underlying parts. There's still an AKS there really, but it does all the work for me. So now I have Log Streaming and Console Connect. So Log Streaming is super useful to help diagnose issues. I can, I can see those logs. And obviously the ability to co connect to the console, well, I can now do shell executions against my containers to again, help me troubleshoot, work out what's going on. On the storage side, so AWS Gem 1, for a long time now has been known it's gonna be retiring. I think it's end of February, 2024. So we still have a couple of years. But the replacement is ADLS Gen 2. This is built on top of Blob. There's a lot of enhanced capabilities because of that Blob foundation. Well, now I can just go ahead and create my ADLS Gen 2 enabled storage account, check I have the right permissions in place, and actually perform the migration from the portal. I don't have to go and mess around in command line tools or anything else. From the portal, I can drive either just maybe a copy of the data from ADLS Gen 1 to ADLS Gen 2, or copy and then redirect uh, my Gen 1 interactions, that traffic to the Gen 2. So all of that I can now drive from the portal. On the database side, so minor version upgrade for MySQL Flexible. Remember the Flexible are the VM-based versions of things like MySQL and Postgres gives me the ability to have automatic failover HA, gives me the ability to use different size VM SKUs, stop and start them, use the burst wall, a whole set of benefits there. And what they're doing now is the 8.0.28 and 5.7.37, those minor versions will be automatically upgraded to for your MySQL as part of your next maintenance window. Azure SQL Hyperscale now has a four nines SLA. So that has gone into GA. So you can always go and look at all the different SLAs for the various services. But the latest April SLA for Azure SQL Database now points out that hyperscale tier. So we're looking at the hyperscale. We now have that four nines SLA availability. And we can see there's always kind of these different SLAs for the various different services based around, well, hey, am I using a zone redundant? Am I not using zone redundant? You have those options, but now just for that base, um, not using the zone redundant, I have that availability guarantee available for me. So, hey, if I'm using that and I have a certain composite SLA I require, that can help me now with that four nines. Moving on, miscellaneous. So Azure Arc enabled servers now add private endpoint support. Remember, Arc-enabled servers are I have an OS instance. This could be Windows, this could be Linux, this could be running on Hyper-V, it could be running on VMware, it could be running on bare metal, it could be running in a different cloud. I have the agent running inside that operating system that connects to basically the Azure control plane, the Azure Resource Manager control plane to be now managed via that control plane. I can tag it, I can have Azure policy, I can add on a whole bunch of other features available through that control plane. Well, previously that communication to the control plane was using the public endpoints. With the private endpoint support, what I can now do is deploy 
those private endpoints into a virtual network in Azure, and then wherever these ARC-enabled servers exist, I just need a path to get to those IP addresses. That could be a site site VPN, it could be express route private peering, but now they'll use private connectivity instead of going out to that public endpoint. There is a special Azure Arc private link scope that I'm gonna use. It's not just a private endpoint. There's a few different private endpoints it needs. Do remember though, that's just one part of it. One of the things that comes with Azure Arc is I'm probably gonna use things like log analytics. Uh, I'm probably gonna use Azure automation. Those will have their own additional private endpoints I would have to light up and enable. So that, that's one part of it, but there's still others you would have to kind of add on. And then secure webhook ITSM integration. So I have my IT service management solution. And I think about with Azure Monitor, I can generate alerts. And then based on maybe it's the alert rule or I have an alert processing rule, I call an action group. An action group can do many different things. But one of those is to actually integrate with an ITSM system. So now with this secure webhook ITSM integration, I can use Azure AD OAuth for that actual authentication authorization to that solution. So it's now a lot more secure and integrated um, to trigger, communicate whatever actions I want. That could be from a metric alert, a log alert, an activity log, um, all of those are now available. And that was it, fairly quick week. Um, I hope that was useful as always. And until the next week, take care.